What's going on, everybody? Good evening. What's up, Bobby? Good to see you. We're going to get this one started in just a little bit. Just going to give everybody the chance to hop on in, and then we will uh, get on rolling. Push the button. <laughs> You got to have, sometimes you got to have those types of warnings. Sometimes you got to have, what's going on, Rudy? Nice to see you. Good evening, Travis. Welcome in, everybody. Going to give it a few more minutes before we get going. Hey, Husky, good to see you. Welcome in, everybody. Sorry if things look a little different this evening. Um, I'm on the laptop. I'm actually traveling, so away from home. So, yeah, things are going to be a little different for the evening, maybe a little bit more brief as well. Um, but still going to hold myself to the same same standard of quality wherever possible. So don't worry. It's still going to be a good one. What's up, Dark River? <laughs> good to see you. Good to see you, dude. Whoa. Dark River is coming out hot tonight. Man, how's everybody doing? Anybody up to anything interesting, special? I don't know how many of you are from Texas, but I'm I'm out here for the week, and it's uh my second time ever out here, and Texas is just so different than everywhere else. I feel like. Uh, how was my day, Green? Honestly, I haven't been trading. I'm 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 away. Uh, so haven't been trading. Um, yeah, I mean, I really the only thing I was watching was Amazon today, but. I, I like to have a rule for myself that when I'm away from home, I don't don't take any trades. But the, the only thing I would have taken is Amazon back above this 184 here, um, which I think I have posted in my tab as well. Uh, that's the only thing I really care about. Microsoft, too, still looking tight. Um, but, yeah, you know, I, I refrained today from taking any trades, especially considering PPI tomorrow. Um, you know, if we get something interesting tomorrow, uh, maybe another dip uh, lower. Um then I might get a little more interested. Um, but for now, just taking it slow, being patient throughout the week. Um, the market's still in a range, so it's it's really not the time to be aggressive, at least for me. You know, I'm a directional swing trader. So when I see the market moving uh, in this type of manner where we had this huge, massive outside bar and four days sitting in that exact same range, there's not much for me to really trade. Um so not much for me to do at this point until we come into some lower supports, 508 on the SPY uh, queues. It would be uh, closer to the 433s, which we almost got there uh, a few days back. Um, yeah, really the only things I care about right now, and, and mainly my focus is Amazon, mostly because uh, while the rest of the market's in a range, this one's actually been breaking out. You take a look at the weekly, uh, pretty obvious high volume or at least increasing volume move higher through some of these larger pivots. Um you know, significant support below. I got my key levels here all marked up. Uh, 180, please push the buy button there. Uh, if it comes back down, uh, that's going to be an easy one if we get it. Um, yeah, that, that's all I really care about. But uh, let's see. Dude, Texas actually isn't uh, too humid right now. It's, it's actually kind of nice. It's the last time I was out here was like 110. And that was that was terrible. I kind of hated life last time I was out here. Um, no, not here for the eclipse. I just missed it. Um, yeah. I'm definitely not. A, I'm originally from uh, Southern California, San Diego, if you guys are familiar. All right. Uh, a couple minutes after the hour. I don't want to keep you guys waiting. Uh, I'm going to send out one other message, letting everybody know we're getting started. Um, and then we will roll right into it. So just give me one second to post this message. Any questions, comments before we get started? Or is everybody just ready to uh, get going? Hot PPI tomorrow. A um, little bit suspicious with uh, CPI leading. You know, you have those uh, energy components uh, leading higher. I think shelter also came in a bit hot this month. Um, you know, the one thing to be mindful of coming into PPI tomorrow, uh, a lot of your commodities are, are up pretty significantly. I mean, obviously, your silver, your gold, right? But most producers aren't really using those uh, with much significance. But even things like your basic materials, um, you know, I don't have uh, any... I guess uh, I don't have any of those spot prices ready, uh, but I mean, if we take a look at something like wheat, okay, terrible example, um, but still up over the last month, you know, you look from March to April, um, 
the prices there have increased throughout the month of, Mar month of March. Um, I don't have any other commodities memorized off the top of my head. I'm sure if we look through some futures, I'd be able to find them real quick. Um, yeah, cocoa is probably one that's up a bit. Oh. Can't find cocoa. Okay, whatever. Anyway, copper, the rest of your metals. Um, that's natural gas. Um, let's see, sugar. Why can I not pull that up? It's listed here on TOS, but it doesn't pull it up. Corn futures, again, up from March. Um, you know, if you take a look at the gain in the month of March, starting from here up to the end of March, it's up 6% over that period. Um, so, you know, there's a reasonable move higher in, in some of these kind of more basic materials. Uh, again, same thing, month of March, if you look uh, here at the lows from March 1st up to the end of the month, uh, right around July 1st, about a 5% increase, which again, you know, not super significant, but just something to be mindful of, right? Some some uh, kind of under the hood costs increase for sure um, for some producers. Um, yeah, I think a uh, steel is probably one where we'd see that reflected as well. So just things to be mindful of, um, but you know, obviously the data is going to answer those questions for us tomorrow morning. So that's the end of it. All right, moving on to the topic for the evening. Tonight, and I realize I can't go full screen, unfortunately, because I can't see the chat. So I, I am actually going to have to keep this <laughs> in this view. So I apologize. I'll try and make it better. Let's see. I can do that. No, I can't even do that because I can't see the chat. Oh, man. The, the cons of having a single screen for these lectures, not so great. But hopefully this still works. Uh, you know, we're not going to have all the transitions, but this will still get the big idea across. So apologize for the little change here. Um, but yeah, today, big idea is to talk about indicators. Uh, as some of you may or may not know, uh, we've been going through the beginner's course series for the past few weeks now. Uh, so we've gone through the first five lectures. Now moving on to the sixth here uh, to talk a little bit about indicators. Um, so big idea for this class, we're going to talk about the basics of indicators, kind of what uh, some of the more fundamental indicators are, uh, how they work. Um, also, we're going to talk about how to set up kind of study sets or add these indicators to your charts. I'm going to do it on Thinkorswim, but the idea applies to kind of any other software as well. So uh, not going to be something, you know, too, too specific there. Um, but yeah, big idea is really to learn about indicators, learn how to use them, uh, why you should use some, why you shouldn't use others. Um, yeah, uh, let's keep going. So yeah, a couple things uh, to note before I get started. Uh, I always like to give this reminder at the beginning of all my lectures. Uh, I do my best to cover a large amount of information in every single one of these classes. And as a result, sometimes that means that I speak faster than I should, or I brush over things a little quicker than I should, um, things like that. So if you have any questions, comments that come up, go ahead, please put them in the chat. I can't read your mind. So if you're confused about something I'm saying or something that I said, uh, go ahead, throw that question in the chat. And if I miss it, just feel free to put it in there again. I promise I'm not ignoring it on purpose. It's just sometimes uh, it's easy to miss. So uh, that's really the big idea. Um, yeah, moving on uh, to how to actually set up some indicators. Uh, so I don't know why I have the volume slides in here. That's not supposed to be there. Uh, we'll just get rid of that. Good part about being in this view. So let's talk a little bit about setting up some different indicators. So as you can see here, we're looking at a pretty clean chart, uh, no indicators really, and I'll even take off all the levels here so we don't have anything else uh, in the way. So pretty clean chart here. Uh, well, I guess I saw the volume profile, so let's get that off. Uh, and you can see here, I'm using the Thinkorswim platform. Uh, it's, I guess, owned by Schwab now, but used to be TD Ameritrade. Uh, and the way that I have kind of my indicators set up is in groups of what are called study sets on here. Uh, and I'm assuming on other types of platforms, they have similar, but maybe not the same name functionality. Um, but these study sets are ways that I like to organize different groups of my indicators. And if we take a look and to edit some of these uh, study sets here, if I just click on them, you can kind of see what's included. Uh, so in this 2050, 200 study set, it's just the 2050 and 200 moving average. Uh, you know, the nine and 21 study set is the nine and 21 EMAs. Uh, five and 13, same idea. And it goes on and on. So just taking a look at a couple of these, uh, you know, me personally, I love having these kind of groups of studies set up because I can just click on them and it throws on the nine and 21 EMAs really easily. Uh, same with the B bands, right? If I want to pull up the Bollinger bands, boom, already good to go there for me. Um, yeah, volume profile, already good, ready to go. Um, so this is kind of my preference in terms of organizing my studies. I have the main groups um, of, I'll call it, things that I like to look at. Uh, and I'll talk through those and give a little bit of reasoning behind them because I'm sure a lot of people probably just want to hear that um, for today. And then I'll go into kind of explaining 
what every single one of these things that I talk about means. Got a question from my phone. Have I been running into more problems with TOS since Schwab took over? When they first took over, there was definitely a lot more weird things. I don't know if it was just a Mac thing, but I would have trouble launching TOS. Like it, it would take me a couple times to try and launch it before it actually worked. And I think that was after the update, like right after. Since then, though, it's been pretty good. Um, I haven't really noticed anything too crazy. It's a little slow when it first starts up, but that could just be my computer. Um, like sometimes I'll, it'll just start up and I'll be trying to like click and change the tickers that I'm looking at and it won't work. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know why it does that, but for the most part, it's been pretty good. Still definitely, uh, one of the number one platforms. I think this, this and Robinhood is really the only two things that most people should really be using. I think most other platforms are, uh, pretty terrible. I think Weeble is pretty bad. I think most other things are pretty bad. Um, I think Tink Thinkorswim, Robinhood, and, and yeah, Robinhood, I think, has made a lot of big strides in the last couple of years. So, um, yeah, it, it's some slowness for sure, but nothing has been groundbreaking for me. All right. Uh, so talking through a couple of these study sets, you'll see I have a pretty um, short list uh, of different studies that I like to look at. And I'm not going to talk about every single one because there's some that don't. Uh, I don't really use anymore. I just kind of have them just for reference. Um, but one of the more important study sets that I have here is this 20, 50, and 200 study set, uh, which this just represents effectively the most key moving averages um, in the market, really. Is the 20, 50, and 200 uh, really always going to be the most important uh, long-term, uh, I'll call it moving averages to be paying attention to. We'll talk a little bit about what these mean, um, but just if you're kind of taking notes or interested, 20, 50, and 200 is definitely something that I'm always checking, uh, you know, in my weekly chart review, looking uh, if price is trading close to that 200 MA, uh, a little bit further away from it. Uh, and we can see how price generally reacts to it. I mean, this is on the weekly. We come and tag that 200 moving average and uh, we never look back. Same thing during COVID, right? Came and tagged it. Uh, real big level, that 200. And, and I think I emphasized this recently to Mario and reminded him of the significance of it. I think he was trying to long something below that. And it's like, you know what, you got to be real mindful um, that the 200 moving average is really one of the most important levels to be paying attention to, um, at least for a longer time horizon. Uh, and you can just see how price reacts to that, that red line uh, on a high level here. And the 50 and 20 moving averages are just kind of supplemental to that. So the way I like to use this study set is uh, if the orange uh, or if the yellow is above the orange, above the red, so 20 above the 50, above the 200, uh, it's easy to say that something's in a kind of long-term uptrend. So at this point, ever since this crossover here, uh, it's going to be more difficult to be long on the SPY. Uh, you have the 20 over the 50 over the 200. And when you get that first cross below, so here, uh, 20 below the 50 below the 200, it's going to be more difficult to be long here, right? Because now we're in a full bear trend. And there's a good amount of statistics backing this. I ran a back test and posted it in my tab and specific on this. Um, this That specific strategy that I just talked about has an amazing win rate over the past, I think, 25 years. Um, that signal's fired four times, at least to the upside, been right every single time and also outperformed the market. But um, yeah discussion that we won't go too far down today. Uh, next study set, this one's kind of from Tilio, uh, his kind of idea, uh, the five and 13 exponential moving averages. This is really used for me to kind of determine short-term momentum and same idea with any moving average. Uh, you're looking for one to be either above or below the other. So if the five is below the 13, uh, generally that's regarded as a short-term downtrend. And if the five is above the 13, generally that's regarded as a short-term uptrend. So you can see here on the hourly, we got that cross above, uh, easier to be long after that. Uh, and same thing here, that cross below, easier to be short after that. And you can see a couple short opportunities there before massive ripper into close. So that's a five and 13, uh, nine and 21 EMAs, uh, or as I call it in my study set here, nine and 21. Same idea, um, just two different exponential moving averages. We'll talk about the differences there. Again, a couple random ones. This is a really old one from Assassin. This I don't use this, but this is some algo he had um a long time ago but just kind of cool to see uh, i guess and, and kind of display the uh i'll call it extensiveness of what indicators can do especially in thinkorswim um this is one of his earlier algos but just kind of goes to show um that it looks like none of the other study sets that we had before yet it's doing a lot more so yeah pretty interesting but yeah not something i use anymore I just kind of save it because it's fun to look at from time to time uh bb is my double bollinger bands so a staple um if you're looking for overextension or reversal trades uh, we'll talk a little bit about those. Um, yeah, a couple more just kind of standard ones. Not going to talk too much, but I'll just kind of click through them real quick so you guys can see them. Um, yeah, different indicator sets. This one is from uh, Steve Kalajian. Um, yeah, 
got the flips indicator. This is one that you've probably seen on his charts before. Uh, when he's looking at charts, generally looks something like that. Um, let's see what else we got. Um, yeah, some other random ones. Again, not going to go, go go too crazy in every single one of them, but this is really the big idea. Again, these study sets help to save just kind of these predefined um, groups of indicators for you. That way you can easily load them up when you're setting up new charts. So wanted to just kind of introduce that uh, concept there. But in terms of actually adding indicators to a chart, it's real simple. Essentially, you just go into studies, at least on Thinkorswim. Again, procedure is going to be relatively similar on most other brokerages. Uh, you go into studies, edit studies, and then you pretty much have your entire list here of all the indicators available to you. Uh, Thinkorswim has one of the most flexibility uh, in terms of the indicators that you can use. Uh, they got a lot built in and a lot that you can define manually. I mean, it's pretty much infinite. Um, so you got a whole list of all the uh, indicators available to you. Uh, and you can also import indicators from online. So if you see studies that you like from maybe the server, maybe, you know, somewhere else, you can go ahead and import those and add them to your study set. Um, but yeah, pretty, pretty easy to set that up. And I see those questions in the chat. I'll come back to those after we talk through this really quick. Um, essentially, uh, how to set up kind of a new indicator is you can either search for it, which I usually like to do. So, uh, search for it or scroll through the list. But for example, if I want to add just a standard moving average, search up simple moving average, uh, you can see here, uh, it gives us that star indicating that it's new. Uh, and if we just throw it on there, we can see what it kind of looks like, just kind of a default blue line. Um, and that might not be exactly what we want or the right period. Uh, so what we do is if we want to change it to something like the 20 moving average, we change the length here. So from nine to 20, and if we want to make it look different, we can make it a little bit wider, which is something I like to do and make it a bit easier to see and then color it a bit. So maybe we want to make it red. Uh, and then maybe we want it to be dots for some reason. So we could do that. Then there you go. So um, again, same procedure for most indicators, especially in thinkorswim, the procedure is going to be uh, reasonably similar, but that's, uh, that's kind of the big idea there. So, um, uh oh, flips. Flips is here to talk about indicators. All right. And we got Norvin too. That's a party, dude. What's going on, Flips? What's up, brother? How are you? I'm good, dude. I'm uh I'm out traveling right now, so a little bit of a different lecture for me, but uh, uh you know, Brian doesn't stop. Nice, nice. All right, um, Flips. While you're here, uh, I showed him what I'm pretty sure is generally what you're using. Um. We got the flips. We got the flip study set here. Does this look uh, kind of similar to generally how you like to set your charts up? Maybe with VWAP? Yeah, pretty much. So, yeah, just talking through kind of the benefit of uh, setting up these study sets and talking them through, uh, yeah, how to how to use indicators. And, yeah, that's a, that's a big idea. Any, uh, any helpful tips from you, Flips? Anything to add on the topic of indicators? Um, wow, beautiful. I use the the nine. I don't know if you guys wanna. I use the nine, the twenty one, the fifty. VWAP volume TCM squeeze. That's it. Simple. So let's set it up. Let's let's we'll kind of walk them through setting it up. So you said nine twenty one, and again, this is kind of a basic lecture. So we want to make sure everybody understands how to like. If you want to be like flips, yep. uh, you go nine twenty one. Just take off, take off that. Take off that one with the with all the lines. Okay. There, so where they can they can see what the graph actually looks like. Yeah. 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 All right, 9, 21, 50, and then VWAP. VWAP, correct. We'll get rid of that, that, boom, and then get rid of these. And then TTM. Yeah, you can put TTM squeeze. This is That's the flip it. setup. There you go. Oh, empanada now too. There's a little bit of a party. A little gathering here. So this is what kind of, if you ever see Flip's screen share as charts, you know, you could always just set up a study set just like his and you can kind of walk through it with them. One thing that we could even do, Flip's, is since we just went through and set it all up, I mean, I might as well just save it and share it with everybody in the lecture if you're cool with that. I mean, yeah, yeah. Given the, given the, the, the setup. If you guys want the same color scheme, so that way whenever I go live, all right, yeah, the... let's let's get the same color scheme. Let's get it all. We'll get it dialed in for like flips, <laughs> so that way, yeah, every time, every time you'll you'll see a lot more charts looking like yours. No, I do the the ninety MA. I do a green, green. All right, light green. The, the, yeah, any green, don't matter. All right, the all right, all right. Uh, the twenty one, I do a red, and the fifty MA, I do it white. 
And what about VWAP? Pink? Pink? Uh, VWAP will make it dots. What color? Uh, usually it's... Uh... No, I do tan. Tan for the 15 minute and then, and then pearl white. The white one for the for VWAP on dots. Like that, there you go. Yep. Is the flips set up? That's it. That's pretty much it. Pretty close. All right. Yep. All right. So yeah, now everybody that came to this lecture gets the gets to have the flips kit. So I'll save this, and then those who are using Thinkorswim, which if you're not using Thinkorswim to chart, I'm not really sure why. Um. Oh, I might need to save this as a style. Let's see. Let's save this as save it as flips. Boom. And then now I can share the style, I think, somehow. I mean, I could just share this chart and then everybody else gets it. All right. So now you should, everybody should just be able to have access to this whole setup. And yeah, that's how to, <laughs> we just walk through setting up a, a indicator study set right there. And it's perfect. Now that's you it. ought to. Everybody's got the flips kit. That's 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 how I would trade every morning like that. I'll test this really quick. Let's see if it works. Oh, doesn't work. I think it takes like a day to get that working. Honestly, I I, I heard that recently that it takes like a day to get that share to work. Have you heard that flips? Share in the settings. I, I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I think that was like a recent change. Like you click share and it doesn't actually go for like a day. I don't know why. Let me see if there's another way to share it. Um, sets flips. I can't just share it there, huh? Blame Schwab. Yeah, I think I think that link should work in a day. Um, but yeah, if it doesn't if it doesn't work in a day, then you can come back back and complain to me, and we'll we'll figure out why it's not working. But I think that should work. Just set a reminder for yourself tomorrow night to come back to it and see if that link works. Because yeah, I feel like I heard that they changed something recently with the with the share sharing. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of the big idea setting up indicators. That's really the basics there. Um, while we got flips and Epinata here, I think everybody is pretty much traded with them at this point. So we might as well talk through a couple indicators that at least how they use um, some indicators that we got. So we'll just introduce some of the more simple ones real quick and then maybe talk through with them. Um, yeah. What the, what they're looking for. And yeah. Uh, give me one second. Um, Cool. So yeah, just introducing very briefly on what I like to refer to as moving indicators, uh, generally kind of two types of moving indicators, um, really, um, well, a couple types of moving indicators, but really what I'm referring to as moving indicators are different indicators that move with the price action. So it could be these moving averages, it could be Bollinger Bands, um, it could also be something like VWAP, right, a couple different types of moving indicators, um, but generally speaking, um, these are really, really simple to use. And this is one of the most kind of easy things uh, to be paying attention to. So two things to be mindful of when paying attention to the moving averages. Number one, and this is something I, I think probably pretty obvious, is looking for bounces or rejections of the moving averages. So this is just a standard 20 simple moving average here on the daily for SPY. You could generally see how price likes to respect uh, that area very roughly, right? Uh, you can see plenty of wicks off this area, and this is back in early uh, 2022. Um, so generally speaking, these moving averages, great places to be looking for a bounce, look for support. Uh, and it's something that I think Flips and Empanada are pretty much doing every day live in VC is looking, um, you know, looking at the indicators for a bounce um, or rejection. Um, and then another thing to be mindful of when using the moving averages is kind of what I introduced a little bit ago here, uh, which is looking for those crosses. So for example, uh, zooming out back to the daily uh, here, we have the nine and 21 EMA, right? And as I mentioned, uh, generally speaking, when that short-term moving average is above the longer term moving average, so the short term in this case is the nine EMA, long term is the 21 EMA. That's generally a signal, not necessarily to go long instantly, but it's a signal that going short is going to be more difficult, right? So looking for those short-term EMAs to cross over the long-term EMAs is always going to be uh, a higher probability of a trend continuation to the upside uh, or any direction, right? So when you get that uh, cross to the downside here, you can see, generally speaking, it's easier to see that move lower. And when we get that first pop-up uh, here, 
Uh, we didn't actually get a move higher, which, you know, obviously there's plenty of reasons for that. But one way to kind of be cautious of that is the EMA has actually never crossed back up to the upside. So the nine never made it back above the 21 here in orange. So that would be kind of a warning there. Uh, whereas here, right on this day, is when we finally got that cross back above. As a result, much more difficult uh, to be bearish there, uh, especially considering two open gaps left behind after that, which, you know, pretty, pretty obvious breakout at that point. So that's a big idea. Um, flips, empanada, either one of you kind of want to talk through how you guys like to use moving averages, day trading. Hello, hello. Good night for everyone. What's up, empanada? How's, uh, how's the family? Very Everything well, good? thank you. Yeah, good. Okay. thank you. Good. Yeah, the recovering. My wife is recovering, doing great now at home. So good. things are back to normal. Thank you good. for asking Good. Yeah, I know. Uh, I, I know how that works, that my dad had the same same procedure and it, it sucks. It's super painful. I've heard or at least the, yeah. the symptoms uh, before. Thanks for asking. But uh, for me, what I what the uh, latest indicator that I'm using, Toasty, is the uh, 20, the 20 daily. SMA. 20 daily. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm using the 20 daily SMA, the 50 and the 200, but on the daily. Got and it. I yep. it to be really useful, the 20 uh, on top of all of those, because you can see like on the bigger time frames how it bounces and how it works. It's very, very uh, reliable. So that's me. That's one indicator that I've been using a lot. It's funny, Empanada. That was the first thing we talked about tonight is the 20, 50, and 200, how those are the three most important moving averages on the daily. So I, I always <laughs> have a my uh, the left side of my chart. It's all, always on a bigger time frame from one hour to four hours. And I have the... 20, 50, and 200 daily open all the time. But it's a daily SMA. They go into kind of like a straight lines. It's not. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So you have them on the lower time frames. No, if you if you have right now on, the, on this one, so you have the simple moving average. If you go to the right. daily SMA, it's a little bit oh, different. Oh, I see what you're saying. I see what yeah. you're saying. You can set it up as a new, as a new uh, set. Yeah, that daily SMA. Got it. it. Okay. Yeah. Those are a little bit different because it's just for the uh, higher time frames, and it's been very, very. You see how? Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Those, that's what you were doing. I didn't know what study that was because I have another study for that, but no. I didn't realize that this was built into Thinkorswim. Yes, sir. I didn't realize yes. there was a built-in one. And if you, if you see, if you go to the uh, higher time frames, like one hour and four hours, you will see how the bounces on the chart are very, very useful on the twenty. And then you see mm -hmm. if you get close or it crosses the 50 and you know for sure that we're going down. And the, the 200, I only has a, have it as a reference. Um, I don't yeah. have the 100, but if you change those and you have and you change every all of those uh, sets for the day. Yeah, we'll set that up real quick. Yeah, let's set it wow, up. Wow, I actually, I, I learned something today. I did not realize that you could actually do this. Yeah, I so have easily. yellow yellow for the 50. Yellow for the 50, all right. For the 50 and green for the 200. And just erase all the, you can erase the other ones, mm -hmm. the, the simple moving averages, and just leave these ones as a one study set. Yeah, it's, there you go. So look look at the higher, yeah, go to the four hours, look. You see, Very nice. You see, look at the, uh, the, the uh, how they cross on the lower level on the yep. 11, 16, yep. And look how it's been just touching Kind of like looking up below, but just surfing the 20 daily SMA. And right. I really, yeah, I love wow. that indicator. Yep. That's a really cool way to do it. I'm actually going to save this set. This is, this is really cool. Yeah. I'm glad you like it. Uh, yeah. If you, go to, if you set it up in the different names and tickers, I'll uh, check it out. How, how super reliable it is on the, on the 20. I mean, we'll just, we'll just roll through it real quick. One name I've been following a lot, Amazon. Yeah, I mean, it's the same idea. It's just you see? You see perfect, how it's yeah. surfing it? Perfect, yeah. And look how it touches perfect. the 50, touch it, look, looks below, and jumps back in, back up. Wow. I, yeah. I've actually never done it this way. That's very, very cool. Give the one thing that I did, tomorrow. Empanada. Set one up, thing set, I did. set one of those tomorrow, and you'll see how, how nice it is. This is what I like to do, which is I overlay the 20 hourly moving average, but it's only for the five minutes. At least that's the way that I have it set up. So, well, okay. it works on it works on anything below the hourly. So, this red line is the twenty hourly uh, EMA, I think. So, uh, that's actually from Al Brooks. So, it's just kind of always a, a strong support uh, intraday to somewhere to watch out for. 
Um, you can see kind of last couple of days how we've been playing around there. That was support later in the, oh, this is Amazon. Let's take a look at SPY. Nice. Um, same idea, right? A couple That's days ago, that first break above the hourly 20, big move higher, access support the next day, break below it. You can see we try to get that bounce there, then break below it. Um, yeah, so another similar yeah. idea, but I, I mean, the data yeah, it's is just, it just, it just I always say, said to everyone in VC and when, when I did the couple of lessons that I've done, that you have to you have to find your style. Yeah. Everyone has their own style. So I like it simple. Right. No, that's super, super clean, actually. I've never I never realized this is what you're doing. I learned yep. something today. Very yep. nice. Well, thanks for sharing. I appreciate that. Absolutely. We got a couple questions here. A lot of people were were interested. Let's see. Um uh, what color was the nine green? I have no idea. It was just a default green. For the crossovers, do you look at a specific time frame, like one hour or four hour? So I'll get my answer to this and then we'll see what Empanada says. Um, generally speaking, right, for any crossover, right, you need to see that happen on whatever time frame the moving average is from. Because, for example, uh, these daily SMAs, while they're plotted on, you know, the four hour time frame or the 15 minute time frame, the crossover isn't real until the daily candle closes because these moving averages are plotted based on the daily bars. So if the daily bar is currently, you know, much higher than it seems, uh, and then, then it ends up closing, then you're going to get a crossover intraday, but it ends up not being actually real. So uh, generally speaking, right, you got to be waiting for those crossovers on whatever time frame that they're actually coming from. So again, we're looking at the daily here. Uh, we're looking at the daily moving averages. We should only be trading crossovers when those daily candles close. And that could look like, you know, monitoring charts 20, 30 minutes before close. You're looking for a swing entry. Maybe you see that crossover getting close. Maybe price is close to support, uh, whatever, a reasonable entry for the longer term. Then you could go ahead, take that entry. But um, that's really the big idea with the crossovers. Anything else there to add, Empanado or Flips? No, I think that's pretty good. I guess that's just a that's a good way how to look at things in a in a longer time frame, and then if you know, like he said, you have to find what fits you. Right. Um, you know, I I'm not a I'm not a long term holder of of options unless I see um a clear understanding on a on a four hour or on a daily, and then uh, we, I'll do two weeks out. Like I did some Apple calls two weeks out today. Um, really, you did? Yeah, I did. I've never heard of you doing that before. Mm -hmm. I've never heard of you swinging something that wasn't out. a weekly, bro. Yeah, two two weeks out. Oh, I mean, it's the perfect place to buy it. Wow, I didn't realize <laughs> what level it came into. I mean, this is exactly where you want it. This is what I've been waiting for too, but I've just been yeah. away. Wow. Yep, that's right where you want to buy Apple calls. I mean, this is the place to try them. If it doesn't work here, it's not going to work until one fifty seven. Yeah. You know, at least on the longer term. Yeah, so wow. I have some Apple calls on the uh, longer time frames, yep. um, and but then I wait, I wait for the four hour and the hourly to look good to give out signals on VC. I notice that VC they like to scalp a lot of stuff or maybe swing something for the weekly or so. So, right, um, I wait for a better setup for weekly contracts. But I started a position on Apple. Very nice. Yeah, this yes. is. I didn't know. Is, I didn't know you got those flips, but uh, I I posted on my tab today. Uh, we jumped in on the uh, one seventy two point five for next week. Yeah, I got I got some some close ones. You did two empanada. Yep, yep. I posted. Damn. On my tab. Yep. I mean, you guys are both. This this is the place to try it. You know, I mean, if we gap down on PPI, I mean, you really you probably add more at one sixty five area, and you cut below that, and that's the end of it. Cool. Yeah. Great ideas for sure. I mean, I, it'll be interesting to see what happens tomorrow. This is, it's kind of out of the make or break spot. I mean, this is the place to try it. It's been sitting in the range for a couple of weeks and finally came all the way back down to support. So yeah, it's, it's kind of now or never. Oh, they want to hear about flips his favorite stock AMD. Let's look at some indicators on it. Right. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> says, I mean, not oh only AMD today. I didn't play a lot of AMD today. I played Nvidia. I called out some bangers in Nvidia today. Nvidia. I did it's Nvidia expensive. calls today. Nah, no, it was it's we expensive. we play. Uh, we played some nice Nvidia levels today, and uh, um, they all paid. <laughs> That's how I it think goes. they were like uh like two thirty seven to like over nine hundred bucks, eight hundred bucks. 
a slight um, average day. The, and then uh, we did some for like one eighty, hundred eighty dollar contract profit, and then, and then end of day was like sixty eight dollar, eighty dollar profit. End of the day, I'm swinging one Nvidia from the from end of the day trades. Yeah, might be uh might be payday tomorrow, and might you might be sad at open. <laughs> Or I might, just, or I might just, just be a negative out of it. <laughs> exactly. That's how it goes, though. Um, Gaddy, what is weekly pivot? That's just me kind of labeling my levels. So I, I think I've seen Empanada do this, too. And I, I like how he does as as well. Um, essentially, I just like to label my levels so I know where it came from. So you can see, at least on Apple, some of these are kind of out of date. Like, I haven't updated my 200 MA in a while. Um, but I label the level so I know what's what. So I know this is kind of the bear gap. So when I'm looking on the lower time frames, I know where it came from. If I see this level in the lower time frames, I know it's a 200 uh, daily point of control, right? Same thing. I, I know what that is. Um, and the weekly pivots, I usually color out orange. So my weekly levels, I usually like to make orange and then the daily white. Um, but yeah, that's that's what that is. Essentially, it's just a weekly support. I mean, if you look back at the weekly, you can see where it's coming from. Just that pivot right there. Three weeks um, pin there. And yeah, that's it. All right. Let's talk through a couple of the basics of some of these indicators. We went through a lot of study sets, which is great. So now you guys know how to apply everything. So you certainly have the background that we need. Uh, let's make sure that we introduce at least the ones that we talked about tonight. Um, that way, everybody kind of knows. Um, yeah, exactly what to focus on. So I think I have a slide on TTM squeeze. Um, so we'll focus on that just because I know Flips talks about that a lot. Uh, not sure if Empanada uses this one. And it's honestly not something I really use. But yeah, Flips, uh, it's Flips' favorite. So we'll talk through it, make sure everybody understands. Um, TTM squeeze is pretty basic. Um, there's not too much to it. Uh, there's a lot of kind of calculation going on in the back end. But for the purposes of this lecture, I'm not really going to talk about the math that goes into these indicators because it's not incredibly important. Um, but real simple concept here. Uh, first, just try and focus on these red and green dots in the middle. The red dots indicate a squeeze or when price is consolidating, and the green dots indicate when the squeeze is kind of firing is, is what it's sometimes referred to as. So the red is kind of when it's in co consolidation, and the green is generally when price is in trend or when the squeeze is fired, et cetera. Uh, so those first couple green dots is right when the TTM squeeze is firing. Uh, and you can see there's these kind of oscillator bars as well. So the blue and dark blue, red and yellow. Those indicate kind of the direction, um, similar to the MACD. So you can see the MACD. I'm sure this is something that everybody's seen before. It's got a similar oscillator, which kind of indicates uh, the direction of momentum. TTM squeeze has a very similar um, kind of oscillator here. Uh, so as you see these light blue bars, that's momentum increasing. Uh, and those dark blue bars are momentum decreasing. And then same idea for the red. Dark red is momentum increasing. And then yellow is momentum decreasing. So. That's, that's really the big idea from TTM Squeeze. Um, again, not really something I've ever used much. So um, that's about all I have to say about it. But I guess since we got flips here, anything else that, that I didn't cover there? No, that's pretty much it. I use it more um, when I scan the market in the morning. I look for squeeze stocks. Mm. Uh, squeeze in pre-market or what? Yeah. Squeeze stocks usually are stocks that will have a big move with volatility um, because when they squeeze, you want to see a big rejection dump or a big pop. Uh, so right. those are right. things that I'm looking for uh, during pre-market on the 15 minute, mostly on the 15 minute. Um, so there is a NVIDIA with the bottom level. Look at that bottom level. How perfect. <laughs> it's, it's pretty close. Uh, I, this is like what you were saying in VC is that all oh, my levels are a couple cents off. What is my levels? My levels off 70 cents off in NVIDIA. I need to, I need to fix my levels. I need to make them better. Yeah. <laughs> 86, 86 cents off 0.1%. I need to fix 86, my levels. 86 cents on a stock that moves $25. It's okay. <laughs> That's 0.1% <laughs> off. I got to fix my levels. Yeah. Fix it, fix my levels. And then uh, if you change, if you change that to the, uh, um, do pre-market high and pre-market low. Yeah, then pre-market is going to give you the wick on top. Do the wick oh, okay. also on the, on the, from the left side. Do both. Yeah. And then shift that to the five minute. Then there you can see the second entry that we did a pre-market high. 
Oh, that's disgusting right here. Yep. So the first that's entry disgusting. was uh, the first entry was uh, based on TTM squeeze. If you look at the bottom, how uh, TTM squeeze uh, volume came up, volume increase, plus TTM squeeze opened up from yellow to light blue. Like that. Plus the volume. Yep. Plus the volume indicator uh, gives us volume. So that's a positive trend line. Um, so we took some some Nvidia calls like uh I don't know it was like eight eight forty five or something like the price target was like really forgot it. And then uh, then our second entry on Nvidia calls was the there that that pull right. back down using that support, um watching the watching the volume increasing and then watching level two being bought. And that was our second entry. And those contracts went up like 180 per contract in like, I think like 12 minutes. That's one thing that I always like to mention is that usually the first candle of the day is the highest volume bar of the day. Like that's, <clears throat> you know, 70, 80% of the time, that's the case. When it's not, it's always something to pay attention to. When the second Correct. candle's the highest volume of the day, always something where you should probably be thinking it's probably going to continue in that same direction because that Correct. doesn't really happen very often so yeah this is i mean it's perfect very nice I can oh. cool yeah i mean that's uh kind of the flips introduction of ttm squeeze looks like nvidia is squeezing on the daily now too so that's interesting yeah you see are you watching that <laughs> yeah first time in a long time correct and first, that's that's this uh, is the longest time in a while actually wow i think it, nvidia is going to be ready and the, the problem with here. that the problem with it is that NVIDIA next week, I think it's going to be ready next week, but the problem with trading it on a Monday is that it's going to be extremely expensive. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's squeezing right now for probably another day or so, depending to what the news comes out tomorrow. Right, um, right. And if you draw your trend line from the top, yep. you can actually see, yep, there you go. Uh, Look at that. That's close. And now change your time frame to the to the hourly, and you can clear. Yep, there it is. That's what we're looking for. That's why you swung the calls. So that's With the double that's the, bottom too. No, yep, that's the reason we we played those Nvidia calls today. That um, makes sense. Twice, both entries were very good pay, and then at the end of the day, it was like three forty or something. We took some for like sixty five to eighty five bucks a contract. Mm -hmm. On the five minute, and then uh, uh, I swing uh, one of those. So if if the graphs comes out good, if the news comes out good, the the hourly chart is gonna is gonna uh, open up like a lot. Yeah. I mean, yeah, this thing above eight seventy. I mean, eight eighty five, yeah. and then I mean, pretty much nine hundred. Yeah, it's, Correct. it's pretty much pretty much nine hundred at this uh, point. Wow. That's a, the, uh, that's exactly what we swing. So, anyways, I like, I like, I love double bottom into flags. I would love a smaller pullback tomorrow, just like about a, a five to ten dollar. I hope so pullback too. I hope so too. Tomorrow and uh, look for a double bottom consolidation flag in the fifteen for a volume indicator that uh contracts are being bought and uh this is definitely on watch tomorrow again for the one that asked me what's my way main watch tomorrow, and videos on watch guys. Yeah, I see why. I see why. My, my, <laughs> you I see, like Amazon. This, yeah. This thing, like, this thing that guys, for anybody that's here, and I, I don't, I don't understand how we make so much, uh, good plays, and there's nobody here studying. It's only thirty eight of us, but for the ones that are here learning, um, I highly recommend to always do your homework. This, this, this chart that that Tosi did live for you guys, I did this this live for myself two days ago. And I've been, and I've been watching this setup building for me to call it out today. So you oh if you're gonna take this uh you know this game seriously, you need to put in the work and the study and the charting for for everybody. So, but yeah, look at Nvidia now on the on the daily coming into the into the four hour. Yeah, I mean it's if if PPI comes out even reasonable, or at least the reaction is reasonable. I mean yeah, this thing it's yeah. it's gonna be it's gonna be big that's that's this is uh, my main watch tomorrow um it's nvidia number two for the the dgens smci no 
<laughs> SMCIs on watch tomorrow. Similar idea, maybe a double bottom on the daily, almost. Yes, <laughs> with a gap. Right. SMCI is on watch for for tomorrow or or Friday, and then uh, Amazon. There you go. Yep, Amazon for sure. This is Norvin's favorite. Here you go, Norvin. You want another entry long on this one? That's crazy, dude. Look at every single one I've been giving him. This is the first entry I gave him. I, I knew I knew it would matter, so I gave him the date. One seventeen twenty four. Three months ago, I gave it to him. I said, "Get long over fifty. It's <laughs> thirty four bucks higher." <laughs> wow, that's crazy. All right, Norvin. Here's your next one. Above 85. 4, 10, 24. There you go, Norbert. There's a blueprint. Yeah, Amazon is one I've been watching since Sunday, actually, Flips. Um, you can see the levels I got here. My You like my level at 180. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I, yeah. I've been watching it at the 184 area. But I'm, I'm, I was away today, and I usually have rules for myself that if I'm if I'm not at home – I don't trade, so I didn't didn't take it today at 184. But I mean, also 182 yeah, is amazing. I'm watching. I'm watching Amazon. Um, I think Amazon can give me a smaller more pullback tomorrow. But I I'm hope definitely, so. Yeah, Amazon. Amazon for the next leg up. Apple trying to hit the support. So if Apple breaks up, uh, tech will go up as well. So Amazon is on watch. Apple is is my main key for uh, two weeks out. And then to make uh, daily gains, uh, I'm not watching NVIDIA. It's the one that's been uh, tighter for a bigger right. move. Right. But yeah, there, that's my watch list, guys. <laughs> Amazon, NVIDIA. I like when we agree. I for sure like Amazon, Apple, and NVIDIA. I haven't even seen. I, I didn't even realize what was going on, to be honest. It's, it's what happens when I'm not I'm not studying. I'm not home, so I don't get to study and, and find these things out. Flip straight on the phone is wild. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Flips is wild, bro. You, you'll trade anywhere, huh? Bro, I trade from Disney. You you can add to that one the daily style on the charts, and you will see that you, the next thing that you have to cross on the way up is a daily 20 because you, you are uh, kind of uh, bouncing on the 50. If you go to the uh, look. Close. Yep. And you can see how it was reacting there, too. We even yep. look at lower time frames. Yeah. So that's you gotta be careful there on top. But if we break above that 20, that's free flying out there. Yeah, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it from now to the 20. I'll be good with those. I mean, the 20 is perfect. <laughs> it's 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 at 900. I mean, it's it, yep, there's no exactly. reason not. If exactly. you don't trim there, you're you're kind of an idiot at that. That's, at nine, that's the... 900 alone. I mean, you don't need any moving average there to tell you to sell, but yeah. exactly. Exactly. I mean, that's 30 points up. If you're even if you take the 900 and he hits there, those contracts for weeklies, extremely risky, but two days away, those contracts I mean, are going to probably move 400, 500 percent. Yeah. It's, I mean, 30, it's like a four, four, three, four percent move in the stock. I mean, if that happens in a day by tomorrow, yeah, it's, it's going to be massive. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a big day for, for VC. <laughs> So the ones that trade with me live, that's that's uh those three are my main watch. Damn, I'm gonna have to hop at VC. I'm in I'm in Texas, so I'm I'm two hours ahead. So I I'll have to I'll have to remember. It's better, it's better than three. Well actually wait. Yeah, I forgot actually. You're you're three hours ahead. I forgot about that. I like I like starting at six thirty. I prefer it to be honest. I don't like <laughs> the later later start. All right, All right. let's I'm, talk through I'm out, Toasty. All right. Hey, thanks so much for your time, both Flips and Epidon. Right. Make sure you guys show them some love, man. I mean, these guys always pull up the class. I don't I don't ask them to pull up all the time, but they pull up. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, always always a blessing to have you guys in here. So much knowledge they can share with us. And, yeah, I mean, I always I always remind everybody, I'm, I'm sure you guys go to VC, but if you're not going to VC every day to learn with these two, man, you're doing something wrong. Come to these lectures at night. Go to VC. Trade with them in the morning. Um yeah, it'll, I mean, I don't want to say it's going to change your life because that makes it sound like a, some kind of scam, but I mean, that's what I would say. So, <laughs> Welcome to the Flips VC. <laughs> you guys have a good night. <laughs> Welcome to the Flips VC featuring Evanada. All right, cool. Uh, let's just talk through a little bit of uh, a little bit more about moving averages, how they work, since we talked about those a lot, but didn't really mention uh, exactly what they do. And then we'll probably call it for the evening and we'll probably talk about VWAP too.
So again, we talked about a couple different types of moving averages. We talked about the simple moving average, exponential moving average, and there's a bunch more as well that aren't really used as much. Um, so just talking through that, the simple moving average, the way that works is it's literally just a simple average. So if you think about any average that you've done before, like if you're trying to think of the average price of three things, you add the price up of all of them, then divide it by three, there's your simple moving average, right? So very simple. Uh, essentially, the simply simple moving average adds the closed prices over the last X amount of periods. So if it's a 20 period moving average, it adds the closing price over the last 20 periods, divides it by 20, and that's where your moving average ends up. The exponential moving average is just a bit more complicated. Um, and it essentially, what you need to know is it gives more weight to recent price action. So for example, um, anything that happens more recently, the exponential moving averages will be a bit more reactive, uh, which sometimes is preferred uh, for like shorter term stuff. I, I generally like to have those exponential moving averages on. So let's just compare them real quick. Um, so I'll pull up the nine and 21 uh, and let's just throw up the nine EMA and the nine SMA. So SMA here will make it easy to see Yep, blue. So nine EMA in yellow. And you can see here, generally speaking, that nine EMA is just a bit closer to price. Uh, so you can see how price is moving higher here, price is moving lower here. That nine EMA is just a bit closer um, most of the time, right? So as price moves lower, the nine goes lower, uh, price moves higher, the nine's a bit more reactive there. And you can see on the short-term downtrend in NVIDIA, the nine's been moving uh, lower, just a bit quicker than the nine simple. Uh, and you can see the same idea repeated kind of all over the place, uh, any time frame. Uh, and that nine EMA is just slightly more reactive than the SMA. And it's pretty clear on a day like today, right? That big move down, the nine EMA is just following price a bit more closely. So that's that's really the big idea, the difference there. Um, again, people have their preferences. Uh, the way I like to do it is use the simple moving average for those longer term daily MAs. So the 220 or the 20, the 50 and the 200, what we talked about with Empanada, we talked about at the beginning of the lecture, those are just so common. I mean, those are things that everybody's looking at, everybody's placing buys at. And the reason that those moving averages matter is because those moving averages represent an average value over the past X amount of days, which is generally deemed as a fair price. So the average price over the last 200 days is probably gonna be a pretty decent price to either buy or sell. Let's looking at that on SPY, I mean, anybody, if you like SPY up here, you'd love it at 463, or at least you should, or else you, you got something wrong with you, right? Um, you know, if you're looking to buy here, there's not a damn reason why you shouldn't be buying at 463. Um, and you can see that concept repeated over and over again with the uh, 200 moving average. So that's kind of the difference of the 200 MA, 200 EMA. Uh, we talked about VWAP a little bit. So just to kind of circle back on that, um, VWAP behaves reasonably similar to a standard moving average. Uh, except it's it's weighted based on uh, volume. So um, VWAP is generally a bit more reactive earlier in the day and kind of slows down later in the day. And we can look at that on something like NVIDIA. Uh, let's see if we could make that clear. Uh, if we pull up the flips V2 and then just remove everything that isn't VWAP. So looking at VWAP on NVIDIA today, and the reason we look at NVIDIA is it had that big move up early in the day so you can see big move up because that's on high volume, right? So very reactive to these high volume moves, right? Same thing here, high volume, so it moves much quicker. And then once volume tapers off, I mean, here you can see it was just flat. And like for the rest of the day here, it was flat pretty much. So um, VWAP generally very reactive in the morning uh, and a little bit less significant in terms of movement and volatility as we continue on throughout the day. Um, yeah, that's the big idea of VWAP there. Um, any questions on anything that we covered tonight? Covered a lot, got to have Empanada and Flips talk through some of the things that they're looking at in VC. So that should give you a bit more background, good information. So that maybe uh, that you have the context that you need. Anything else? Any questions, confusion? Questions for Empanada? We still got him hanging out. I was right to thank you, man, for the, for the time. And I'm also, I love to learn. So I sit here watching and, and trying to figure out how to use different indicators again and, and everything. So thank you very much. It's, uh, you know, you're a role model for everybody. You and Flips too. I mean, it's it just goes to show that no matter how good you are, you're never too good to stop learning. I mean, Flips and Empanada both. I mean, both of you guys, obviously good enough, um, you know, to be working here with us. And yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's very important to remember to never stop learning. Uh, never think that you know everything because you don't, right? There's always something new to learn. And I even learned 
tonight and I'm the one that's supposed to be teaching this and know everything. And yeah, I learned, learned from Empanada there. I had no idea about the daily uh, SMA. I thought that was awesome. So yeah, thanks. Thanks for your time Empanada and glad to hear um, everybody's doing well in your life again. Yes, Norvin, we'll check your two favorite tickers at the end, at the end. We're going to make sure everybody's questions are answered. And Norvin, I thought you were leaving, bro. Why are you even here? I thought you canceled your membership. You said you were done and you're coming back in July and you didn't even leave. I mean, not that I wanted you to leave, but I, I was kind of bummed. Anyway, um, uh, how far back chart on the one hour and four hour? I generally just use the default time frames on Thinkorswim. So the default for the one hour is 20 days. Default for four hour is um, um, 180 days. Um, but when I'm looking at the chart, just because it shows me 20 days of price action doesn't mean all 20 days are relevant. I usually focus in on wherever the range price has been trading in, at least most recently. So like here, I'm really focused on what's going on in these past couple of days as price has been trading in a similar range. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, Bobby asks, how long have I been charting? In terms of actually charting and like actively, you know, charting, um, I mean, almost four years, which it really isn't that long, honestly, but yeah, almost four years. But I mean, you could get, you could get easily as comfortable as I am with charts in a couple of months. I mean, it doesn't take that long. I mean, if you're, if you're practicing charts for an hour every day and just identifying patterns and paying attention to kind of price structure, you could get a pretty good grip on things more quickly than you might think. Can you send your setup on Thinkorswim? It's pinned in my tab, Norman. It is pinned in my tab. Yeah, to paper trade some more. <laughs> I don't, I don't think, I think Norman quit paper trading. I, I think he's done. All right. If there's no more questions, we're going to look at Norman's stickers. And if there's any questions, we'll stop looking at Norman's stickers, but I do enjoy looking at Norman's stuff. All right. He said MOD. What is this dude? Something just happened with these guys today. Yeah. We'll look at, we'll look at Tesla after we look at uh, Norman's favorite dude. What is this bro? Hi Mike. I see you. I'd like zoom in to see the volume here. I mean, what is this, dude? <laughs> Sketchy. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know if I really like this one. I'm not gonna lie, Norvin. I don't know if this is one. This one's it for me. I mean, somebody's buying it right now, though. I mean, if you're gonna buy it, I mean, yeah, I guess down here is the place to do it. I don't know if this trend really matters, but you could draw it. Oh, M-O-D. Oh, okay. I did it wrong. Okay. I was going to say, what the hell is this, dude? All right. All right. All right. We got something going on here now. Okay. Well, first of all, Marvin, it looks like you're a little late to the party. It's up 200% in six months. So we're a little late to the party here, uh, but no worries. No worries at all. Uh, let's see. It's always fun looking at what Norman finds. I don't know how he finds this. Um, let's see. Let's let's take it up. Check it out here. Um, yeah, weekly, not much to really say here. It's it's literally going parabolic. So, I mean, not necessarily the best place to be a long-term buyer. Um, in terms of levels, yeah, it's a, it's a bit funky. Probably could draw that trend up that it just lost. Um, no, dude. I mean, I don't really know what to think about this one, honestly. Hmm. Something's clearly going on at these wicks right here. So probably mark that level. Dude, yeah, honestly, I don't really like it. It's, it's kind of too much of a mess for me. I mean, I'm sure you found this for some reason. I'm sure they do some kind of data center or cooling or something stupid like that, but I mean, these are the levels I'd trade off all these pretty much, but we got a little gap right there. Watch out for, um, yeah, I mean, it looks all right. I mean, I probably wouldn't really, I don't really love it below this short-term trend here. Uh, I'm assuming probably below the nine, maybe even 21. Yeah. So we're below the EMA. So not necessarily the greatest place to get long. Uh, you probably want to see either price come back above this trend in the EMAs here. Or come a bit lower, maybe back down. I can't see the level because the chat's in the way. Come back down to this, you know, 80 area, but it's a weird one for sure. It's a unique one, but it could be worse. Uh, all right, MOD. All right, he's got ALB. ALB. <laughs> um, okay. 
And but I said analyze tab. Let's see, MOD. Yeah, I mean they're growing. They provide engineered heat transfer for cars. Dude, they must have got into data centers recently. There's like no way. This is it does for cars, so there's no way they're only working on cars. Norvin, tell me that they're doing data centers now. Please tell me that. If this is really only a car climate solution company, I'm shocked. That they got to be getting into data centers or something. All right, ALB. Um, yeah, a little bit of a different one here. And somebody asked the difference between volume profile and volume profile V2. I'll just show you. It's just all visual. Um, it's just the way that I set it up. So volume profile here doesn't show the uh, value area and V2 does essentially. That's that's the difference. All right. So moving on here, VP. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, we got big support right here. That's, that's a positive, right? So right around here uh, is kind of the place to be a long-term buyer, not necessarily short for a trade uh, as much, but yeah, I mean, if you like this name long-term, it's the place to be a buyer, not a seller down here. Maybe a little bit of some kind of pendant forming uh, here at the lows. Long-term trend down. You could probably draw like that. Not as relevant right now, though. I mean, it looks all right. I mean, really, I just stay, I, I wouldn't be short above this, the POC here, 120.4, 121.4. Um, yeah, it's it's an interesting one, Norvin. Not your worst work. All right, last one for Norvin, ALPN. All right, bro. <laughs> Come on, dude. <laughs> what is this, number one on the Robinhood top movers? Come on, dude. <laughs> Really? <laughs> this has got Norman written all over it, bro. Yeah, that's that's on the Robin Hood top movers list. Dude, I got nothing for you on this one. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what to say. You should have asked me about it like down here. I could have slapped it long and uh, 10x. Okay, all right. All right, we'll look at Tesla real quick. Um, Tesla, it's one, it, it's everybody's least favorite stock right now. Uh, not a single person really wants to buy this thing except the kind of Tesla fanatics. Um, that said, it's, uh, it still doesn't look great even to me, um, but Shark's starting to like it, which makes me suspicious. Um, but I don't really love the look of it here. I mean, it just screams that sellers are still in control. Um, for a short-term trade, it's definitely not somewhere I'd want to have my money parked. Um, you know, the trend's still down. It's in a $15 range for the last five weeks. Uh, me personally, I'd rather wait for one of these levels to crack. So 176 or 160 on the weekly, you wait for that weekly to close above or below. Um, and you trade the range after that. Uh, that's that's really what I'd be looking for. Uh, in terms of anything else, it, it, it's it's not in the greatest place for a short-term trade, and it's probably going to stay in this range until earnings, honestly. I mean, it's probably not going much. Uh, it's probably not going far uh, until that earnings call. But I will say, um, uh, I will say, essentially, the, um, the earnings, I mean, the street's got to be expecting really terrible earnings from Tesla. Uh, you know, they've had pretty horrible delivery numbers, some of the worst they've had in a few years. Um, so I, I want to almost say that this is, you know, one of the more opportune earnings to buy before. And that doesn't mean go buy calls. Um, but a lot of bad news is already baked into this name. You know, terrible deliveries. If there's one positive note on that call, like, you know, pulling forward the timeline of production or seeing an increase in margins or raising prices or anything. I mean, one thing positive for investors to grab onto. And I could I could see this thing break into 175 pretty easily. Um, I, I don't see much of a negative reaction. I mean, I feel like a lot of that's got to be baked in. Their delivery numbers were terrible. I mean, it was some of the worst numbers they've gotten. And, and you saw, I think it was like a five, six intraday drop um, due to those numbers. So you got to think that a lot's priced in here. Um, but I, I guess it's Tesla and can always surprise, but I'd be actually more biased to the upside on this earnings report. Honestly, I feel like it can't get too much worse than it already is. Uh, and people hate it. I mean, there's, there's nobody that really is kind of 
bullish on Tesla besides again the, the Tesla fanatics. So um, yeah, I, I kind of like it for a, for a longer term investment, and, and Shark does. But you know, I mean, on a terrible report, on, on if that happens, it's going to crack 160, and there's a good chance it heads to 150, and, and really below the 150, it's it's back to. I mean, I mean honestly, it's back to 100. So it. You know, it's it's a risk, obviously, just like any earnings report. But I, I you gotta think that some of the worst is already baked in here. You know, it, that's just my thought, though. I'm no Tesla expert, or uh, yeah, it, just kind of my my perspective there. That's that's a complete opinion with with not a significant amount of research. So do do what you will with that. But yeah, that's it for the evening. Uh, let's see. Um, Magnet says there's another focus on the main supply level, probably the point of control. Um, I, I think, yeah, it's probably the point of control, but yeah, if you, if you have the script sent to me, I'll, I'm, I'm interested to see it. Yeah. I, yeah. Read, you read the volume profile book. Wow. I haven't even read a book on the volume profile. Yeah. If, if you have the free time, please send it. Yeah. I'd love to see it. I'd be interested to see what's, what's different from the, from the standard. Sounds cool. All right, fine. Last one, PayPal. I know a lot of you guys are probably in this one. Um, let's see here. so i haven't actually charted this one out recently all my levels are real old so excuse that i mean the trend's still up um you know above the nine above the 21 emas are positive decent day today i mean all things considered spy was down about a percent paypal was down just a bit more than that um so i mean all things considered not a bad day um for paypal i think this is actually more of a positive than a negative considering how the rest of the market kind of reacted there. Um, yeah, I think um, it looks, it looks okay. Uh, it's not something, it's not something I really trade. Um, so I can't speak too much on it, but um, yeah, I mean, it's got a decent level of decent amount of overhead resistance really all the way up to the 67 spot. So if it can clear that 67 daily close above, I mean, it's up to 68 and then kind of open skies to the 71s. Um yeah, it, it's not the not at the spot where I'd enter new longs at this point. Um, but if you're in it already, which I know some of you probably are, it looks it doesn't look bad. I'll say. But again, you know, we got news pre market tomorrow, so that could uh, pretty much just destroy all this, or or maybe uh, make it a whole lot better. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, I'm interested to see that. All right, everybody. That's going to do it for the evening. Um, appreciate all your time as always. It's always a pleasure. And thanks for bearing with me uh, through a bit different setup this week. Uh, I'll be back, uh, back to the standard setup, um, back to the standard setup next week. So thanks again, everybody. And I uh, hope you guys have a great rest of your week. I probably won't be around too much, unfortunately, but uh, I'll try my best to. All right, everybody. See you guys all in the next one. Thanks so much for your time. Hope you all enjoyed. Adios.